So today, the video that we're focusing on is really focus is looking at um, some of the things that, again, aren't really highlighted as clearly in the Rubenstein text, um, but something you should be prepared for to see on an AP test and even for our coming test on Thursday. Basically, we've been talking a lot about political geography and the, the land and how it's distributed and organized to fit human societies. And so when we look at politically, the relationship between countries and states and where the power structures that might and how that power is distributed in the TED Talk video also posted on the website you would see that we could talk about the changing geopolitics of the the modern day world today what we're going to focus on is some of the historic historical theories and and concepts or models that have been used and, and would be likely to be referred to at some point on an AP exam it also is something to consider when we look at geopolitics even moving forward uh, where we see tension or problems in the world today and looking at these models or theories in, in historical reference to help better understand the world. Obviously they're theories or concepts that have been tested over time through different periods and ages of history but the general theory is based on some of the things we'll talk about here in the next few slides. One of the first historical th schools of thought that fueled a lot of the German um, sort of motive, political motives during the middle part of the 20th century were based on a school of thought from Friedrich Ratzel. Basically, he considered a state consists of people, and it's really formed by human society, that the states themselves would then reflect people and human society. As territories expanded, as a nation or a state expanded, it just reflected its growing strength. And so it justified the German expansion because the Germans were uh, in the Nazi parties. If we look at the German expansion throughout Europe, it was justified through the fact that they were just a healthier, better, stronger country. A competing school of thought that originated around the same time, uh, going back to around the turn of the 20th century, was presented by Halford Mackinder. This is known as the Heartland Theory. And essentially what the Heartland Theory said was that whoever controls the mainland, if you look at the global island, most of Central Asia and Europe, whoever controls that the central part of that con that continental landmass is ultimately going to rule the world. If you don't control this that heartland or the pivot area as it was described by Mackinder, then the rimland or the outside um, regions would be inconsequential. That the real control or the ruler of the world would, would be in controlling that central landmass. And with the much of the latter half of the 20th century, this theory appeared to be very consistent with the rise of the Soviet Union. Um, even though we had competing global powers in the West, the fact that the Soviet Union had grown to the size and influence and the, its continued sort of expansion into Eastern Europe and into parts of Southeast Asia was support for that theory at the time. Another school of thought in direct opposition to Mackinder's heartland theory would be the Rimland theory. And essentially it just flips around the theories of Mackinder. Uh, Nicholas Spikeman um, presented this as a way of really looking at having control of ports and access to the sea. That if you controlled the access to different land areas that you ultimately would have control and be more likely to rule. And so the pivot area or that heartland area that Mackinder was suggesting would actually be the weakest point if you were to cut it off from any of the access or points of points of port to any of the waterways. Another school thought or theory was known as the domino theory, theory and this was, existed after World War II during the Cold War. Uh, it's really a product of the, the competing world powers between the Soviet Union and the United States. It could be seen not only in, the, in some of the propaganda in the slide, but in our action, that in our efforts, you know, why we stayed in Vietnam as long as we did, or our actions in Korea, as well as other things like the Truman Doctrine, which was expressed policy to try to limit the expansion of communism throughout the world, and immediately after World War II, like the Marshall Plan, where the incredible efforts that were and resources that were used by and spent by the Americans to help support the rebuilding of Europe to prevent it from falling under communist or Soviet control. Yet another school of thought would be Alfred Mahan. And one of his texts is one of the first geopolitical texts that is thought of in the field. And it really focused, again, as, as we consider Mackinder's heartland theory, this is almost an exact opposite. In fact, what Mahan would suggest is that it wasn't even control of land as much as it was control of sea. So having control of the seas and having the ports and having a, a navy that would reflect that was essential to having geopolitical influence or control. Mahan's theories were ultimately used by both the Germans and the United States in building their navies as we moved into the 20th century World War II conflict. 